Hey guys, tonight we're going to be working on my Speed 6, but this garage is a complete catastrophe, so we're going to take care of that a little bit first, and then we'll get to work. Alright, so never fun cleaning the garage, but it was very necessary in this case. Uh, but now that we're all done, uh, what we're going to be doing tonight is working on the Speed 6 here. Uh, we're actually going to just be finishing a job that I'm already pretty much done with. Um, just felt like, you know, trying to make a video, kind of see how it goes. Uh, so what we're going to do is finish wiring up an oil pressure and temperature gauge by VEI. Uh, so the gauge, um, and I'll, I'll do a walk around and show where it's at and everything. but. Uh, you know, this, mo this motor here has a lot of miles on it, it has 133,000 miles, and these cars don't tend to, you know, be playing too, too nice after uh, 100,000 mile mark. A lot of things tend to happen, they're very finicky. Um, so I figured it's a good idea to wire up oil pressure, oil temperature gauge, because I'm going to be pushing this thing a lot on autocross course, uh, road race courses, really anything I can get myself comfortably into driving this car that I care a lot about. Um, but uh, I feel like it's a good idea to keep an eye on these things. Just, you know, it's not going to make a big difference. If things are going to blow up, go, it's going to go pretty quick anyways. But I feel like, you know, it's just kind of a good idea to keep an eye on it. Um, maybe know a couple split seconds before, turn it off, and maybe have a block that could be machined. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to finish up that wiring job. I already have it wired underneath, but I'll give a quick walkthrough of how I did that and then we'll wire it up on the inside and uh, I have an exhaust to put on as well so we'll see if we can get crazy with that tonight otherwise um, maybe maybe I'll like the way this turns out and want to do more we'll see alright now we're going to check out the front of the car so I can show you guys what's going on underneath and we'll start tightening up that wiring started looking at what I've already done, something kind of boring because the job is pretty much already complete. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of my car, talk about the things I like about it, the things I've done to it, and just kind of show you guys what it is. Alright, so what we have here is my 2006 Mazda Speed 6, and as you can tell, there are some parts missing out of the engine bay, some things not put together. That is because I've got a good friend who owns a shop, and I have a lot of my parts there because I powder coat my own parts. I have not been able to powder coat those parts because the wiring that he has for his 240 volt power outlet does not actually have 240 volts. So as soon as we can get that fixed, $500 later, I will be getting my parts powder coated the colors I want them and they'll be back on the car. Uh, but we've got a couple of things to do before we get to that point. So engine bay here. Uh, it's a pretty basic build, nothing but bolt-ons, engine mounts, just supporting mods here. Um, it's got the stock turbo, stock engine, I haven't changed anything out. It also has a tune for E85. It actually runs a 50-50 a tank of E85 and 93, making it roughly E50. When I'm running that tune, I feel so much more low-end torque. This thing is an absolute monster. So, for wheels here, nothing fancy, just some XXRs, but this car, it's all about the suspension. Not a lot of power adders, but I definitely care about the way the car handles and the way the car feels while it handles. These seats here are out of an RX-8 R3, the, the same friend with the shop where my powder coating stuff is at, parts out cars and gave me a great deal on these. Could it not add them to this car? So here is actually the gauge that we're going to be working on. Um, it's all pretty much wired up in the car as far as the power to it goes. Now we're just going to be working on adding the sensors to it. 
Uh, nothing too crazy there. That's the interior. The exhaust is a custom three inch turbo back exhaust. No cats, uh, just resonators actually. Sounds amazing. I'll post a, a link in the description to a video I made of it on the two step before I took it down for maintenance. To show you more of the car, I'm actually gonna go ahead and go underneath. That way we take a look at the wiring and I can kind of show you some other things I've done. So right away you can see I have a upgraded intercooler as well. I forgot to mention that previously. Uh, this is a Treadstone TR8. Uh, it might be a little overkill for the stock turbo, but um, I think kind of the definition of this car is overkill. I want to overbuild it for what I want to do. So hopefully it you know continues to last a little longer when I'm pushing on it hard. You can kind of see some chassis bracing back there. I'm a firm believer in this stuff. I can feel the car, uh, especially on you know a Mazda 6 platform. It's nothing too special. So I feel like that could always use some help. Um, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but the snake oil works on me. So I run a chassis bracing there and I get a couple other pieces in the back, as well as strut tower braces. I feel like it, make it makes a difference. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this wiring here. I'm sure you can see it hanging down. Um, there's definitely a lot of extra wire in the looms. Uh, I'm, you know, always a fan of better to have it, not need it, need it, not have it. So I always cut a little bit of extra wire. Um, this is fine for me. You can just pull it through in, inside the car and get rid of all this slack. Um, but so basically what this goes to is the sandwich plate right here. You can see the temperature sensor sticking out and uh, I'm really trying my best to um, do everything to a high quality with this. So I'm running corrugated wire sheath all the way through. Uh, I've got everything wrapped up real good. All the joints with the electrical tape. It's also shrink wrapped underneath. Um, just really don't want to do anything, you know, half-ass on this car anymore. It's it's about working and it's about going fast. So what I'm gonna be doing, um, this is the ground here. I actually went ahead and uh, did that in a separate sheath in case I needed to disconnect this. Um, it's just kind of cleaner pulling the. Uh, these grouped wires apart from the ground, just kind of do the location. Uh, so I go, went ahead and I wrapped this one with some zip ties. I'm gonna do the same for these and kind of pair them together once I pull the slack out. Um, and it should hold it up out of uh, the way from everything. Uh, gonna check on it periodically, but I'm, I'm feeling like that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the top of the car now and we'll take a look from there. So I'm definitely a fan of, if I wanna do something you know, wire related, I wanna hide it as much as I can because having a rat's nest of wires, especially in an engine bay that has a rat's nest of wires. Shout out to Eric Yarbrough, I need to send my harness to you, man. Um, you know, let's make it look as OEM as we can so we can hide that as much as we can. So uh, I'm not sure if you can pick out maybe which sheath looks cleaner here, but this is actually the one for my wiring going into the car. So like I mentioned before, we got a good amount of slack, so I'm gonna go ahead and tug up on that. Um, I already ran it through uh, kind of like a zip tie little bracket I made underneath. So this is nice and form fit along the subframe and it should stay up out of the way. I'm gonna check it again really quick before I kind of tighten everything down. But uh, this right here should be the necessary slack to make everything nice and straight down there and let's cut it off inside the car. All right, so now that we're inside of the car, um, all we gotta do is just pull through that remaining slack from the engine bay that I've pulled up. Um, I'll be able to run the wires to length to up to the gauge to kind of see how long I want it to be and uh, I'll be able to cut them from there. So what I'm going to do to kind of keep this to be, you know, for easy removal for the gauge if I need to get to something else, uh, I'm going to connect all the wires from the outside of the car with male-female connectors. That way I can just pull it off, pull the gauge out, don't have to worry about it. Um, in case you're wondering the way I'm powering the gauge, I actually just used an added fuse. Uh, I just plugged it into my cigarette lighter uh, fuse and that works perfect. That way the gauge doesn't stay on when the car is off. It just turns on when I turn the car on. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, there's probably you know a million different ways you could wire your car up for that to happen, but I figured as long as that keeps working, I see no issue with it. As you can see, I added a lot of extra wire. Uh, like I said, I always like to be a little cautious on that end. I have uh, some super long wire looms, so you know I definitely have excess. I don't have to worry about running out of it. So you know, figure send it and make sure you have it. That way, if you need it, you didn't come up short because that's you know a bigger issue for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, 
uh, get it to size, add the connectors. What I ended up doing was I actually just unplugged the gauge. Like I said, I'm gonna add male, female connectors to the back of these wires so that I can pull them out if I ever need to remove the gauge to kind of get behind the cluster or anything like that. Uh, so I removed those. I ran the, the wire as far as I needed it to go. I honestly gave myself a little bit of extra, um, but I have plenty of space to tuck it up underneath the dashboard. Uh, so I went ahead and ran that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the male female connectors on now. Uh, it's much easier this way. That way I'm not like up underneath the dash, you know, wiring these things up when you really don't need to be. Uh, so I'm gonna wire that up really quick and then I'll show you guys when it's all done. I just wanna share something really quick. Um, this definitely works if you have a Speed 6, but pretty sure it'll probably work with just about any car that has uh, a blanking plate for a tape cassette player. If you pop that cover off, um, the structure is there to hold the cassette player. Um, now, like I said, if you have a Mazda 6 or a Speed 6, you know, this thing is definitely pretty solid all around. It's just missing a bottom. So, uh, you know, comment below if you want to see how I made this here. I'm about to explain what it is. Uh, this is actually a wireless charging dock right here. Uh, what I did was I took a piece of cardboard, taped it to the bottom part of this. It's, it's an opening that accepts a cassette player. Um, so it's got the whole structure to hold that thing and uh, it just needs a bottom. So I literally used cardboard and uh, taped it on and it's been holding for years. And I added, I'm not sure if you can see it, I added a wireless charger in there and I just ran that to, I have my cigarette lighter rerouted to my glove box to a power inverter. So I have the, the wires running to that, but there's even like a small little hole cut out. It's perfect for a USB cable to run through there. Um, highly recommend it, you know, it's pretty sweet. You have a place to just throw your phone. I've actually got my phone here, so you just plop it in. The car doesn't have any battery right now, but as you can see, this is a uh, Galaxy S7. It fits in there just fine. A Plus would fit in there, you know, just as easy. Um, just a fun little mod you could do, for sure. Sometimes you gotta admit to yourself that you're just in a little over your head, you know, you need that extra hand. So I did that and I got my extra hand. Bruce, hey, good boy. You can help me fix this car? Yeah. We gonna fix this car? Yeah. Yeah. All right, sounds good, buddy. I figured I'd just take a second to kind of show the car lowered. I went ahead and lowered it when I brought it back in. And uh, I even kind of forgot how good this thing looks actually sitting on the ground. I love how aggressive the wheel setup is. Um, by the way, what I'm looking to do with this car is mostly going to be a autocross car slash track day car. Um, this is not my daily driver. Uh, I've also got a Focus ST that I drive back and forth to work, so this car can afford to definitely um, be put through its paces and if it breaks, it can break for just a little bit. So really trying to uh, build it right to do well autocrossing and on the track as well. So now I've got everything wired up here and all wrapped up nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these wires up where they need to go through the dash. I'm gonna put the gauge back in place, set the uh, the gauge housing in there as well, and uh, get it all nice and buttoned up. Then I'll show you guys when it's all finished. Everything is back in now. Um, fortunately, I can't turn the car on to give it you know the true test. It's like I showed before, there's some engine pieces missing. Um, so hopefully, you know. If you guys like this, I'll make a video later on where I can kind of give an update on it. Uh, if you know you do feel that way, definitely let me know. Just comment below, like, hey, I'd like to see how that thing works out. It'll, it'll motivate me to actually make a response video to this. This is something else I kind of wanted to show off really quick too. Um, this car came with factory navigation. It was pretty low quality, and the only way you could upgrade it was by buying expensive upgrade discs. So what I did was I just ripped the whole thing out. Um, this is an Android tablet here. I made a custom bracket um, to hold that in place and I have a uh, inverter back in the glove box. I'm not sure if you can see it back there, but an uh, inverter that's kind of wired into a uh, cigarette lighter and that charges this thing up beautifully. Uh, I've had it in the Florida sun for about three years now and it's had no problems. I did install some fans. I'll kind of show that really quick. 
install some fans uh, over where the battery would go, just to kind of help help things out a little bit. Um, some days it does get hot and it takes a little bit to uh, you know function properly. There's an alarm that goes off, like you know, saying that the battery is hot. Um, so I just installed these fans to kind of get rid of that sooner. And uh, as you can see here as well, this uh, particular setup does not allow for the use of the open and close button. Uh, it wasn't really something I cared about. I kind of wanted to just leave it all always open anyways. So I made it around this, but um, I am kind of thinking about, uh, I have a 3D printer. Uh, I may make some brackets to accommodate uh, both setups here in the future. So um, if you've actually made it this far and that's something that interests you, um, I think we're pretty much best friends now, but you should also, you know, write in the comments below that you would like to see something like that, so then, you know, actually have that motivation to, to maybe do it sooner rather than later. One more thing I wanted to show off on my tablet here, uh, I actually have a program on here called Tasker, so I can kind of set uh, specific conditions. Um, one of the things I did was kind of simulate the car turning on and off. I have uh, Bender from Futurama. He uh, kind of gives me different greetings and goodbyes based on the situation. So the car is on right now, the tablet's receiving power. So when I turn it off, it should trigger the goodbye. So now we got the, uh, the hello. Uh, the battery's not usually low, but the car's been off for a while. So um, as you see too, uh, torque goes into sleeping mode. And then the screen actually times out after 30 seconds, and uh, every everything uh, turns off on the tablet, and it can last for like a good five to six days like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on now, so we can kind of you can get an idea of what the uh, one of the hellos are. You know, I'll just I'll cycle through a couple. So that's all for this video. Uh, if you liked it, let me know by thumbs up, comment, you know, tell me who liked it, what you didn't like. I'm open to hear that too. Or you know, hit that subscribe button too. If you do that, I'll make more of these. If you're maybe interested in seeing something else, something else I have in mind, I'm gonna do some reviews on cars driving on an autocross course. You know how they act performance-wise. Um, let me know what you think. You know, if you if you like what I'm doing. You know, like I said, anything you think I could change. I'm always uh, open to hear that, um, you know, so that's it for this, and uh, now let's uh, shut up and drive.